Um, <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. I am, don't know me, I'm Eunice. I'm Eunice. I'm Eunice. I'm Eunice. I'm Eunice. It's been really a privilege for us to be here with you. Um, your nation has always been in our prayers. Mm. It's, it's very different to be, um, to just listen um, from my from pastor as when he came back from Mongolia. It's very different to listen when he's there. Uh, when he came back and tells us about you and when and being here. Yeah, now you begin to I begin to understand what Adriel and uh, Pastor Wong was mentioning last year. About um, the spirit that they sense here. And I pray that um, this hunger and this um, spirit of wanting God will continue. Um, I mean, God has given us so much over the past three days. Um, and it takes more than just our head knowledge. There has to be in our hearts uh, an identification with the word. And, and I hope you will come into it. So uh, I'm not a teacher. I don't like to be up here. I'm, I'm but uh, I just want to continue to trust God that as He has already started His good work here. That He will continue it until the end. So um, let's pray for all this. So Father, we come before Your holy throne this evening. As your humble servants, we have our hearts not offered up to you. And we want to be in a place of willingness to hear from you, to intuit into your spirit, to sense your presence, that will order our lives. Today and in the days to come. So I want to um, pour this time into your hands. Can you speak through us? Speak through me. I'm a broken vessel before you. We will tell you woman in person's happy. Not worthy to carry and to bear your word. And you will be taking what we wish you. But only be worthy of God because of what you've done on the cross. Isn't that the first matter? He says, You must be the first of it in the church. So he's speaking. Get the answer. Yes, to see you. Can you hear her? And hearts to perceive. If there is any hardness of heart even here right now in this room, come and confront us with your truth. For nothing stands, O God, um, before your truth. But everything has to be broken down. Because it is what you want for us, your church. So we become broken bread and pour out oil. For you and for the nations of the world. We ask for this in your name. Amen. 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 Something that is still happening in me, in my heart. Um, so, uh, if I uh, stumble and start 
because we still think that we are good. Um, when we still think we are good, there will never be a brokenness. And when we are not broken, we can never come before God. So I grew up in that and uh, finally uh, I ended up in Pastor Wong's church. At the age of 16. Um, and something was different. But a difference that I was scared. That I was fearful. Because all this while, I've never met who I've never met the true God. Be it such the drinking or hunt the old job, you mentioned, till all soon at the end of Sundays. And just seeing how they live their lives. Till be a titri age and the child and the thing in her past. That represented who God is. Or he had he made the titri to you, John Harrod. Make me scared. Would not be pressed. Because of just the cost of it. What will it cost me? So it is possible, so I was in the church um, from 16 right up to I was 25 years old. That is 9 years. So it's possible to be in a church for 9 years for that long. With the truth given every week. But yet I remain the same. Didn't come to know God. But now I'm in the church and I'm not scared. 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 I'm not scared where I was and how I was, I've never responded to God. I was unable to respond to Him. I was unable to respond to His love. It was, for me, it was like as though um, God wanted to show me and give me His love. Uh, yeah. so I was never able to receive it. There was just so much, just imagine a, a cup that is so full of yourself. Uh, when God wants to pour in, he can't. So from, from then on, I began to realize that something was just very wrong with me. Until one day, um, so when Eugene expressed his love for me, I, mean, I told him no. I said no. <laughs> and Eugene realized that um, the no was just more than just a boyfriend, girlfriend, I say, you know. Uh -huh. And even after I said no, there was no peace in uh -huh. And that was when Eugene uh, was one day on January 31st, uh, 2015. I remember I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know. I I I I I not I I I I I I I saw how broken I was. I saw how ugly and how sinful I was. 
And that whole night it was um, apparently I was I was groaning in my sleep. I was I met God that day. And from then on, um, there were just, just a lot of things that happened subsequently. So, one of the very, very stark, um, very significant events that followed. Was God confronting my relationships with my family? Confronting my relationships with my family? So, when God meets a person, he doesn't need to come in in majestic ways. He doesn't need to come in lightning and, and thunder. But he will confront you in where you are. And we as human beings the first thing that God will actually confront us is in our relationships. Because if we are to have a relationship with God, that relationship will order our every other relationship. So the first relationship that was that was shaken in me was a relationship with my family. Because I grew up in that family. I, I take on the nature of that family. My behavior, my character was of that family. And it's impossible to come before God with that kind of nature. It's impossible to have a relationship with God with that kind of nature. God had to revisit my history. God brought back to my memory the history of my family. And God let me see how when I said how broken my family was, that only came when I saw God. So, until today, my relationship with my father, my relationship with my mother, and my siblings, uh, is in a very it's in a very bad place. <laughs> it's because when I begin to see how broken the family was, I tried to tell them. I tried to tell them how this family was working on the premise of human goodness. And that human goodness will never allow us to come to God. But, but they were offended. And so we have not been speaking for the past two years. I don't know where is this going to end up. But I know that I have to remain in God, remain in Him. And allow him to work in this situation. It is more than just wanting them to change. But more and more I see what, what was in me. 
the ugliness. That the death in me. And all that was hindering for me coming to God. When God come, when God comes to us, we are we are placed in a, a position of vulnerability. When God wants to know us, when God wants to know us, He will expose everything that is in us. And we can't escape. And if we want to escape, God can give us over to it. God can allow us. So, everything, all of the, the, everything that I was sensing in my heart as Ever since I got saved on January 31st, I It came to a point where after that then we got married. And we came, we came to a point where um, God gave us a child. So we had our first child. And at 11 weeks of the pregnancy, ah, I just decided to have a scan in the hospital. And when they scan, and when they scan, there was no heartbeat. That was again a, a sign for me. That there was just death in my life. It's a death that has been there. That has gone unnoticed. We call it in medical terms, it's a mis miscarriage. So it's not, there is no sign. There is no symptoms. We just accidentally we found out that there was a miscarriage. So that was like a story of my life. That there was no life of God. That there was just death in me. But it has gone unnoticed. And we have been sitting in the church, listening to the truth. But that was just operating in me. So we have to be very careful in hearing the word of God. We have to be very careful that there is no actually death that is operating in me. Uh, I do not know how to tell you how to find out about it. But remaining in, in the Lord, in the life of God, will reveal death. So I had to go through a, a physical, we call it DNC. So the night before I went for the DNC, I was just crying to the Lord and saying, Lord, you have revealed this death in me. And Lord, I want to come into life. I don't want any more, I don't want to be linked to this source of death anymore. But I want to be linked to the source of life which is here. So I went for my DSC. And that was like a physical representation of a spiritual reality. 
So even so many things was happening in my life. But my surroundings and everything remained the same. Many of us only want God to change us. Many of us only want God to change our surroundings. Many of us only want God to change our surroundings. Many of us only want God to change our surroundings. Many of us only want God to change our surroundings. Many of us only want God to change our surroundings. We want God to change our children. We want God to change our pastors. A pastor will change it. We want God to change our bosses. Bosses will change. But no, God is after you. The hand of God must change you. God is after what He wants in you. Can you see who is the one who is doing it? And without coming, without doing that work, without coming to Him, who does who get? And we have been talking about the priesthood. Um, you read uh, in Exodus when Aaron and the, the, the his sons were to be presented and go before God as priests. Aaron was a Aaron who would have to take the picture of the Lord before him. There wasn't to be any flesh that should be exposed. The picture being at his feet was a scoop. God just wanted all of him to reflect God. That's why the garment was from the head down to the toe. And that is how it is, should be for all of us here. The thing that is hindering us is not um, it's not the bad things that we do. We are all good people here. But it is our goodness that is hindering us. And every day God wants to confront. And if we don't come to God and say that Lord, even my goodness is 50 racks before me, Бид нэр түүнлэг очоад бурхан мэнэ би өөл нь энэ энэ мэн сайн хэлтэй энэ мэн хүртэд одоо өнмаар айнаар гэж хэлхгүүл ол. We never be able to minister as priests before. Бидэээш түүнэй өмэн тахэч мэн цогсаж үүлчээ чадагүй маа. Because there is nothing that God wants in us. Яад бид бид нэ дотор алхтэг хэн мэж бах бахгүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүүү
одоо нэр тийм үлд анзаарагдан одоо тийм жижиг сэвчиг одоо өгч бэлдүүд байдаг шүү дээ. Бэкорс бид. Тийм төрөлт бурхан ярьдаг. Би өөрөө би минь нэг хэмтэл гэдэг. Бид нар анхаарлтай л байх юм бол ярина. So after this this whole seminar after this whole conference. Би энэ одоо семинарын дараа don't expect God to come to you in in big ways. Бурхан тэгээл танд сүү ингээд тачигнаа та нэр гэж олж ирээл гэдэг нь бүтэй үсээ сүрчин байдгийг бүтэй үсээ. Be attentive to your family. Ганц нь гэр бүлтэй анхаарлтай бай. To your wife. Их нэр их нэртэй. To your children. Хүүхдүүдтэй анхаарлтай бай. In your work. Ажилда анхаарлтай бай. To your kids. Аа хамт ажилдаг хүмүүстэй анхаарлтай бай. Мэдээж дараа нь сүүл үс чэрч. Би мөн сүндэй анхаарлтай чих тав хаач байсан. God is speaking. Тэгээ бурхан ярина. And God is challenging you in this mundane, normal things in life. Тэр мужраас бурхан байж та бидний гин өдөр тутмын амьдрал дээр маань үргэлж ингэж сорьчихдаг байхгүй. This is this relationships that you have back home and in your work and in church. Танд байгаа харилцаанууд нь штэ одоо сүм, ажлын газар гэр бүлтэй. The God begins to speak. Яг энэ харилцаанууд одоо амжилт бурхан ярьж. The God begins to cry. Ярьж ихлэн засаж ихлэн таны. because when you are connected and when you are in relationship with god ha burhanta holbogtsan tuunte yaardag yaardagtal yum bol every other relationship we put into order bugh busad harilzaanud imgtsgtsende zaam so what is a sign and one of the the the, the evidence of you being in the right relationship with god tani burhanta zuu harilzaata baaga gich batlag nig shinch gidi bol is seen in your relationship back home gertee baaga hummusdi chin harilz harilza sayn baaga 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 Тэр нэг сайн шинж гэдэг нь. Тэр нэг сайн таны одоо гадуух энэ хүндлэн харилцаанууд чинь юу ч өөрчлөгдөхгүй юу л. You can begin to suspect that are you in a, in a relationship with you. Та юу нэг бурхан бүтээрээ харилцаа ер нь явагдаж байгаа гэж сэжиглэх хэрэгтэй, харагдах хэрэгтэй. God is a relational God. Учир бурхан бол харилцааны багш. And he comes to you, his people in a relationship. Тэр учраас тэр өөрөө хүмүүс рүү гэхдээ танд харилцаагаар дамжигддаг байна. It doesn't come as a tyrant. Тэр ингээд нэг тийм дарангуул их чинь тавьж орж ирдэг. It comes in his love to you. Харин тэр хайрлагдаг учраас танд ирдэг. Таны хайртай хүмүүсээр ирдэг. So we then in always with a heart that is willing and open to receive his love. Тэр учраас бидний зүрх сэтгэл өргөж түүний үгийг хайр нэгэн дээр хүлээж авах хүсэлтэй, тэмүүлэлтэй, хүлээлттэй байсан. So this is this is the priesthood. The priesthood is ultimately a relationship with God. Тэгэхээр энэ бол тахилчлал. Тахилчлал гэдэг чинь зүгээр автоматта түүнтэй харилцаа харилцаа л байна. The community. Түүнтэй хамт байх. Bear his nature. Түүний юм чанарыг нь тэгэх. And this is what God wants to achieve in his church. Энэ сүм дотор бурхан тэний тэр л зүйлийг олж хөдөлсөн юм. So as a church here. Тэгэхээр сүм энэ байгаа сүм. Дөрөн I heard from Pastor Sue that uh, three years ago there was another pastor who spoke on this on this same topic. It be no so pastor so that was on such a thing. Or on just the only such a thing. Which thing has that? That John didn't do it. It's the same. And God was bringing this up again. The only thing we can do is to do it again. If you miss this, there is a tiny part of it. The foundation of your salvation. Or the outside surrounding. You miss God Himself. At the same time, we can do it again. At the same time. God didn't establish any form of office to minister to him. Бурхан өөрт нь үйлчлэх албуу дотроосоо God established the office of the priesthood. Тахилчийн албыг л гаргаж ирсэн нь бусад бүх үйлчлэлийн үндэс болж гэсэн. No minister to him as a, a prophet. Та ишэ зүйлэгч шиг дүндүүлчих чи. No minister to him as a pastor. Pastor болж. Pastor no minister to him as a, a, a dentist. А эсвэл одоо аюу dentist you minister to him as a priest. Та тун яг тахилчгийг үйлчлэх хэрэгтэй. Тэгээ бусад нь араас нь гарч байгаа. And as physical as it was for Aaron to put on the garment. Тэгээ харагдах хэлбэрээрээ Аарон бол үүнийг илэрхийлж хурдас өмсдөг байсан. It will be as real as all of us to put on the garment of the priest. Бид нар ч энэ утга алдаагүй бодож шүү. Бид нар ч мөн тэр тахилчийг үсэлдэг үсэх хэрэгтэй юм. And you have to fit the garment. Тэгээ бүр тэр тахилчийн өмсөлт таарах хэрэгтэй, тохирох хэрэгтэй. And every fitting is going to cost you. Харин тэр тахилчийн хуртас таны би биен ч айч эрхтэнд таарах болгондоо таньаас өртөг нэх юм. It's going to cost your relationships. Таны харилцаануудаас өртөг нэх юм. 
So are we ready to bear that peace? So don't let this just go by. But remain in it. You are a priest forever. You are a priest first. Before you are any other thing. So it's not an office of title or a, a, an office of only Pastor Sweet or Pastor Baggy should be priest. But all of us. Because we are to come together to minister to God. As a church. So here in Mongolia, back in Malaysia, is the same requirement. So we, we, we continue to pray for you. You continue to ask that God will work this so deeply in you. That a, a testimony of your life will be a testimony of ministering to God. A testimony of ministering to God. And So I'm the younger brother of Adriel, mm -hmm. and uh, he brings his good wishes and regards and love to all of you. And so the lesson has come. <laughs> and uh, thank you for the privilege and the opportunity for me to speak to you. I know that all of you came to listen to my father. Uh, so I, I thank you for, for uh, listening. And ending it here. And so I hope that whatever it is that I will be able to share with you tonight will be from the Lord and will be for all of us. Father, I come before you this evening, as all of us do, depending on you, leaning on you, because you are the giver of life, and then Lord, because you have given us the Holy Spirit, we are therefore meant to be a life-giving spirit. But the source of life is from is you. So we ask that you take this moment to add onto all that you have already given. You are God who blesses. You are bountiful. You are vast, you are infinite. And you wish and you long to give to your church. Because you will build your church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against you. And so you have commanded us to do one thing and one thing only. And that is to seek your kingdom. And your righteousness. Because if we do these things. This one simple thing, that everything will be added unto us. You will give us things that we have not even known how to ask for. Because that's how good you are. That speaks of your eternal nature. That you are not bound by time. 
You go before us. You know what's ahead of us. And therefore you make us go through things. So that you may prepare us for what's to come. And we thank you for your word. Because it does exactly that. You may help us with what we're going through now. Or it will prepare us for what's ahead of us. And we thank you, O oh God. We thank you for your goodness. God, you are good. Only you and you alone are good. So bring us close to you. Deal with us. Address issues in our lives. Address behaviors in us. Address our mentality and our mindset. Come and uncover everything in us that does not belong to you. So that God we may give it up. So that we may repent. And in repentance, you will come to save us. You will come to redeem us. You will put your nature in us. Because you long to always change our hearts. So let this work that you have given us begin to cut away the foreskin of our hearts. So that in replacement it is your life and your spirit that is only in us. So take up this moment. Take of the few hours that we have left with your saints. And give to us such a word that will send us back to our knees. Where God we will be changed forevermore. I ask the Lord especially that you will quicken the work that has been spoken. I ask that Lord through the Spirit you will make us to recall these words. Lord through the busyness and through all the chores and the responsibilities of life. May these words be sealed in us. So that when the time comes, the time of requirement comes, you remind us that we may never forget. We bless you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's go to John 15. We have been considering about the issue of the priesthood. And uh, before I get into the word in John 15, uh, um, I need to share with you this one word that has been circling in my mind ever since the priesthood has been shared. The struggle I have when I I have opportunities like this is to to really rely on the Lord on what He has to give to us right at this moment. Because I have been personally blessed being a, a son to my father. And I've had many times being with him and being in the ministry. So there's so much I want to share with you. There's so much that I know, so much that I've been through personally. But, but I'm limited by the clock. I'm limited by the time. So I, I need to really focus and know, like, Lord, what is it that you are speaking to us? 
So when the theme of the priesthood was presented to us, understand that it is not a mistake. It's it's not an accident. So this isn't some topic that just came out of my mind and then we just started to go with it. In short, it's not human wisdom. It is the wisdom of God. And so I believe that it is a very timely word for all of us. And specifically for the Church of Mongolia. In the last few years, we have been considering very much on the issue of seeking the kingdom. And everything ever since has been an addition to that word. For instance, you may be asking, how does the priesthood relate to the seeking of the kingdom? Well, it says in the scripture that we are meant to be priests, a kingdom of priests. So really, in reality, they are all interrelated. Connected. So the, the issue of the kingdom is not separate from the issue of the priesthood. So the issue of obedience and seeking the kingdom is not separate from the issue of the priesthood. So this is the one word that has been circling in my mind, and that is the word behold. I hope you have the exact word for it, beholding. And it was the task of the priest to behold the face of the Lord. Once a year during the, uh, the sacrifice, during one, one of the, uh, the feasts, I guess, it is incumbent upon the priest to go into the holies of holies to commune with God. And so fearful and so awesome is the is God Himself that there needs to be a rope tied on his feet. In case that if he dies, they need to pull him up. But there's a bell to it actually. Right, so it, the, the rope serves as two things. The, the first is to know if he's still alive by the ringing of the bell, and the second is if he dies to pull him up. So what Jesus did when he came? Jesus when he tore the veil upon his death, in between his death and resurrection, God the Father's wrath was upon the earth. And I hope some of you know that in the scripture it says that the Lord tore the veil from the top to the bottom. And again, a lot of these physical representations are all communicating a spiritual message. So God is so kind that He uses the physical things in our life to communicate to us a spiritual message. So that's why everything that we go through should have meaning. The life of a Christian is not a life of accidents. It's a life of purpose. It's a life that God is intentionally doing something in you. So you heard from my wife earlier about how she went through a miscarriage. What what you don't know is that prior to her miscarriage, I was actually in a different part of my country. Mm-hmm. I was not with her. Mm-hmm. And I suffered one of the worst cases of food poisoning. 
Тэгээ би бас зэрэг яг нөгөө нэг хаалт хортоод амар их өвч өвчтэй байсан. Яг хүн өвч өвчсөн ба. I was so it was so bad because I was away from work in a hotel. I couldn't even get out of the toilet. Тэгээ би нөгөө зочид бодолдаа бүр нойлоор чадахгүй хортлог болоо. When the doctor came to the door of my hotel. Тэгээд энэ ч нөгөө зочид бодол дээр ирээ. I couldn't even get to the door to open it because I was stuck in the toilet. Тэгээ хаалт тогшсон чи би нөгөө нойлоо гацчих гарчих чадах. It was one of the worst cases if not the worst case of food poisoning I ever had. Тэгээ миний хувьд хамгийн аймшигтай хортлог болсон. And so the next day. Тэгээ маргааш нь when I yeah the next day was the day where I was supposed to go back home. Маргааш нь би гэрлүүгөө харах хэрэгтэй байсан. So I got all the medication, all the injections in me. Тэгээд яа зүгээр тусал мэсэлхийг хийж гэж. So I'm feeling just like you know 30%. Тэгээд 30% хүрд ирж. And then I get a call from my wife. Тэгээд их нэр маань залгасан. And she's crying over the phone. Тэгээд уйлж исэн. And she says that dear the, there is no heartbeat anymore. Тэгээд хүүхдийн зүрх зөвхөлхгүй байна гэс. So again I knew like is as though like you know when the lord says two shall become one flesh. When the Lord says two shall become one flesh. It's very true. There is some way in some form I have I have myself had to just experience it. So immediately I knew that Lord you are after something here. And right before her procedure right before the procedure to remove the fetus. За тэгээд нөгөө нэг цэвэрлэгэ болохоос өмнө uh it was very clear that I said I think the Lord is after something here. Надад маш тодорхой байсан бурхан энд ямар нэг юм хийж. There is an issue of death that hovers I don't know if you know the word hovers around your family. За та энэ гэр бүлийн ингээ тойроод эргэн тойроод энэ тийм өглөөний нэг шинж чанар нэлээд you need to renounce them. Тэгээд чи тэднийг одоо ингээд So I remember at that night she prayed. I said, Look, "Now you pray." I didn't touch her. I didn't lead her in prayer. I said, "No, you go before the Lord and you pray." So I was just along for the. I was just along with her. I'm with her. But she has to be the one to. To make that transaction with God. I can't do that on behalf of. Би түүний өмнөөс энэ шилждэг гэж хэлсэн. Их нар маань өөрөө хийх хэрэгтэй. Гэхдээ би түүнтэй хамтсан. It was like okay so her DNC her procedure was at, was scheduled to be at 9 a.m. За өглөөний есэн цагт нөгөө нэг мэсдэсэл байна. We were praying at 2 a.m. Тэ бид нар хоёр цагт залбирчих өөрөө хоёр. So it's just hours before her procedure. За хэдэн цагийн өмнө гэсэн. And so that's when I I as she was praying. Их нар маань залбирч явах. I I truly sense death leaving her. Тэр үхэл түүний хэвлэгээс гарч явж байгааг гарч байгааг би мэдэрсэн. I I sense in my spirit a release. Сүнс дотроо би тэр чөлөөлөлтийг мэдэрсэн. Because there was a peace Яг тэр тийм амар тайван байсан. There was a calmness. А тий амар тайван тайван бол ясна. That that entered into that whole room. Тэр өрөө дүүрэгчсэн байна. And one of the specific words that she prayed or I even after I took after she finished praying I prayed. А за их нэр маань залбирч суусны дараа би залбирсан. Тэгээ тийм их тойм нэг онцгой үгийг гаргаж ирсэн. Was this word that death will never want never again visit this womb. Үхэл дахиад энэ хэвлэлтээ уулзахгүй гэж залбирч ирсэн. And so Jaina is that my first daughter, our first child, is that is the fruit of what I'm talking about. Тим учраас тэгээ одоо дараа бит хоёр хүүхдтэй болсон ба. Энэ бол бид нэрээ хэрчлэл юм. But it see was first a spiritual reality. Эхлээд сүнслэг байдаг тийм л. It was first a spiritual condition that that God needed to address. Бурхан эхлээд тэр сүнслэг асуудлыг шийдэх хэрэгтэй гэсэн ба. Before there was a physical fruit of it. Тэрний дараагаар бид үрж ирсэн гарч ирсэн. Now I'm not saying that every single time that God addresses spiritual issues of your life. Би бурхан үргэлж бид нэр амьдрал оос мэслэг асуудлыг шийддэг гэж хэлээд биш үү? That that everything physical around you will change. That's not the case. Таны эргэн тойронд байгаа одоо бодит бид бүхэн өөрчлөлт нь энэ бол тийм асуудалтай зүйл биш. So we were blessed. I mean that we it was our privilege that we had Jaina. За одоо Jaina гэдэг бид нэр охинтой болсон бид нэр өрөвдсөн байна. But again Jaina to us represented the spiritual fruit. Тэгээ Jaina ч гэсэн бид нар сүнслэг үрж ирсэн төлөөлж байгаа. Right we marvel at this life not because it's physical. 
We marvel at this life, life because in this life had so many spiritual meaning. And when you're able to go through these things and, and submit to recognize and submit to the Lord, then life becomes so meaningful. Life becomes full. Life becomes abundant. But when we forsake the Lord, when we don't recognize him and submit to him, then everything, in, everything else becomes worthless. Everything becomes meaningless. And when everything becomes worthless and meaningless, then you start feeling worthless and meaningless. Because God is no longer bringing understanding to you. Because you don't recognize him. Because you don't submit to him. So understand that really when the Bible says we war not with flesh and blood, but with powers and principalities. It's very real. There are forces and powers that are beyond flesh and blood. The battle of our soul is not flesh and blood. It is that which is unseen. We can't pick up swords. We can't pick up guns to kill it. As great a conqueror and warrior as Genghis Khan was, he can never destroy human nature. No great conqueror ever knew how to destroy human nature. So only Jesus Christ can change your life. And that alone is what makes him God. That is alone is what makes him. That's why you can trust him. Whatever the cost is, whatever the price is. If you have God on your side, you have everything. So I like what once my professor in the university said. He said that um, he had a very, he had a statement that, that he said that really struck me. He said that it is better for the devil to be against you. Than God to be against you. Okay, let me say that again. It is better for the devil to be against you than God to be against you. Because he said this. Because if the devil is against you, you can still have God to cry out to. But if God is against you, who do you cry out to? So let me, let me give you a very good piece of advice. Choose God. Amen. Choose Him. Because then at least whatever your hardships, whatever your problems, whatever your trials, whatever your challenges, you have got to cry out to but if you choose to disobey him, you've got no one and no, no God to cry out to. So let's go to scripture. Oh wait, I haven't gotten to the issue of beholding. <laughs> so yes, uh, before we get there, beholding. So it was the task of the priest to go to look look at the Lord, I mean to behold the Lord. And if you think of it, the priesthood was a, a preview of Jesus Christ. 
Because likened to Jesus Christ, the priest ministers before God and then presents himself before men. In fact, if you think about everything within the sanctuary, within the, the inner courts, the outer courts, the sacrifices, everything is a preview of Jesus Christ. So, for instance, the outer court is where the sacrifice was. Jesus was going to be that sacrifice. So the priest as well going before the Holy of Holies, that is also a picture of who Jesus Christ is. So how is it that we are able to properly and adequately minister before men? I think I want to speak to the men right now, address the men here in this place. How are we to be men to, that will lead our wives? And to love and raise our children. Because everything that we learn from our fathers and our mothers, anything that you learn from your culture and your tradition, is not the same with God. And as Christians, we are to love our wives and our children how, like how Jesus loves us. So our master, our teacher, the one who teaches us how to love is no longer our biological mother and father. It is Jesus. So uh, let me give you an example. If you came from an abuse family, an abusive family, Family. Where your father beat you. Your father was just a very violent man. Your father was, your father was a drunkard. He even beat your mother. That's going to teach you something. The chances of you growing up and becoming like him is very high. Because, because that's where you grew up, that's what you've learned. But we are not to follow the ways of our Father. We are supposed to follow the ways of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus So if you want to have power and authority, and a fucking righteous, right, righteousness, holiness. It is so essential to behold the Lord. To seek the Lord, to behold Him. Because once we can do that, that will teach us how to love our wives. That will teach us how to teach our children. And we are able to do that. Then God can entrust us to lead the church. Because nothing tests us more than family. Nothing will test you more than your family. Yeah. You know, it's okay if we, want, we, we say goodbye to a friend. It's okay if we have to reject a friend. Because we have a saying in English that Blood is thicker than water. I don't know if you have something equivalent to that. Mm -hmm. What is an expression that says that, you know, family is of the highest value? Yeah. Like, if you have to choose between your friend and family, you always choose your family first. Right? I'll give you an example. If your friend is dying, versus your, your mom dying, which funeral do you go to? Surely your mom, right? So that's what I mean. The priority, that is the hardest and most difficult thing to overcome. If we do not practice beholding the Lord, if we do not seek and behold the Lord, and if we don't have a, 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 a talking relationship with him, 
түүнтэй ярилцж харилцдаг бол if we don't have a a vibrant and active relationship with him түүнтэй идэвхтэй харилцдаг бол then we'll be bankrupt we'll be bankrupt with words in bitrig ato dator bol jesus is the living word jesus өөр амьд үгэсэн all right jesus is the living word тэр амьд үгэсэн and therefore when we when we have relationship how do you have relationship with your family за та яаж гэр бүлтэйг харилцдаг how do you grow in your relationship with your family гэр бүлийнхэн харилцаан дотор та яаж өсдөг бол you talk ярддаг үстэй you speak ярддаг how do you How do you have relationship with your son and daughter? Ахуйд хүүхдтэйгэ яаж харилцдаг вэ? Even if you don't know how to speak. Яаж ярих юм идэхгүй байсан ч. I've seen the deaf and I've seen the dumb even speak through sign language. Тэр нөгөө нэг сонсгохгүй хүмүүс бүр ингээд тохионы хилээр ярьж. That is also talking. Чи яриа ахгүй. Right? That is also speaking. That is also communicating. Ярилцж байгаа гэн нэг хэлбэр харилцсан. You don't know someone just by sitting down and just looking each other and nothing going nothing is going on you cherhku inget hidden tal suuga bi dimlugo harad ev yamar ch harilsan yaw so when you know a god and you behold a god who is so rich who is so infinite tir hizgaargui baylag tir eznig bi tir harhad and you start taking on his nature tuni mun chanaas bi tir archhilti that is going to enrich you being a husband being a wife being a father being a mother tir tanig nuhur ihnar ech kuhud bah tir baylag одо чадваруд цурах жижиг дээр that relationship you share with the father эцэлтэй хуваалцж байгаа тэр харилцаа чи to teach you how to communicate with your wife and your children хүүхдтэйгээ эхнэртэйгээ хэрхэн харилцааг танилцаа хас your home is your practice ground гэр чим бол бидний нөгөө дадлагчдаг газар байхгүй your home is your practice ground гэр бол бидний дадлагчдаг газар before david was chosen to be king david хаан болж сонгогдсон өмнө the field was his practice ground тэр because he was a shepherd. shepherd. And he he was so meticulous in making sure that every sheep was accounted for. Тэгээд тэр бүх нөгөө тоологдсон бүх хоно алдахгүй төлөө үнэхээр төвлөрч ажиллаж байгаа. He was skillful as he was faithful. Тэр итгэмжтэй байсан чадварлаг байсан. He could fight against beasts. Тэр бүр нөгөө нэг араатай амьд тэгээс If the owner came back it's like hey where's that one one this нөгөө тэр нөгөө ханч ханч хүрч ирэнгүүтэй хараадгүй ийм нөгөө тэр хайчсан гэж шүү. Not okay. I mean quite honestly if we own 200 sheep for example. За чийдэл бид нар 200 хүнтэй гэж байна. If one man missing. Нэг нь алгалч. Do we really care? Бид нар тэрэн дээр амар ачил бүтлөө хөө. We wouldn't right? I see how meticulous and how faithful how skillful David was. Хэн Давид бол ерөөсө нэг ч хоног алдагдгүй хардаг байсан. Тэмжилт нэг. That was his field. Энэ түүний талбар байсан. That was his practice ground. Түүний дадлагчдаг талбар. So as it is with sheep for David. Тэр Давид яг хот хоний хоний билчээр байсан бол it is even for our families. Бидний хувьд бол гэр бүл юм. That not even one thing has to be gone has to be misplaced. Тэр бидний гэр бүлд нэг ширхэг зүйлч буруудах ёсгүй нэг ширхэг зүйлсч алдаг. Order and structure. А бүртэц болоод эмх зэгц. Starts from the head. Толгоноос ирдэг. Starts from the top. Дээрээс ирдэг. And men. Men as in males. Ирч ирчүүд. You are the head of your family. Та нар бол гэрийн өрхийгөө тэрмүү юм. You are the priest of your home. Та гэрийнхээ тахилч юм. There's one prayer that that all of us should be praying. Бидний зайлбарх хэвээр нэг зайлбарлаа бүгдээ нь We have been praying in Pure Stream Ministries. За Pure Stream гэдэг манай үйлчлэлт бид нар зайлбардаг. Is that Lord raise up men? Эцэн минь ирчүүдийг босгож ирэх. It's an issue. Энэ үнэхээр асуудал байна. The devil is very intentional in attacking the head of the family. 
Diabolic words are so strong as Hanatara as he would take him. Many, many men are failing. And many, many women are replacing the authority of men. Tell us, I'm in pity to the issue to hate me, click on the best in the church. And in so doing, there's a lot of troubles that's entering the church. Because more and more women are on the rise. We've been talking about the priesthood. They're all men. They're all men. So what happens if men loses their authority? What happens when men stop beholding God? You're seeing it happen now. We are living in a generation that is seeing what happens when men loses their sight and focus on God. So our prayers have been very specific. That as the Lord recovers His word, the preaching of His word, as the Lord recovers in the church the preaching of His word, he will likewise raise up men that will be gifted in the interpretation of the word. So I was very, very encouraged when, when Sud, Pastor Sud was sharing with us this afternoon over lunch. And her relationship with Pastor Buggy. And how she felt that, you know, I think, that, or rather he felt, Pastor, Pastor Buggy felt that the time was right. For him to step up. For him to enter into this role. And I believe it doesn't stop there. I believe this is a message the Lord is using to the rest of the men here. So what the Lord has begun in this family He's now seeking to replicate this in all of you. So, so I was very encouraged because it shows that God is restoring order to his house. God is making sure that not even one sheep is left astray. God is making that not even one matter, one issue is overlooked. He is intentionally and purposefully addressing these specific issues. And the hope is that he will do more. But it all begins in beholding the Lord. This will be the number one struggle of all our lives. Ever since I was saved in 2004, the single greatest struggle I've had in my life, in my walk with the Lord, has been focused beholding the Lord. And there are many distractions. A lot of distractions. Because life is full of drama. Life is full of people. Life is full of relationships. And all these single components of your life will seek to distract you. Even the needful things, even like your chores, your responsibility, like working and, and, and yeah, you know, you're sending your kids to school, right? Uh, making sure the school fees is paid. Right? I'm not talking about just the bad things. We all know that the bad things, the sinful things. The lying, the cheating, the stealing, the, the adultery, that's all bad, we know that. We know that doing those major sins will cost us very much, we know that, all of us know that. But again, it's the subtlety of human nature. 
Тэр энэ ерөөсөө яг хүн хүний одоо оршин байгаа тэр мөн чанартай холбоотой So beholding the face of the Lord. And Jesus tore that veil. Jesus tore that veil. Jesus tore that veil. Jesus tore that veil. Again, signifying that now he is ready to commune with all of us. In you, it be bit that everyone now has access to beholding. So remember, only the Jewish people, like what we've been reading about the priesthood, has been just exclusively with the Jewish people. So that was exclusive to them. So the Egyptians didn't have that access. The Jebusites didn't have that privilege. The Jebusites, the Hittites, the the, 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 the Canaanites, none of them had that access. Only the Jewish people did. So when Jesus came, and when he died and rose again, and when he tore that veil, that was giving you and I the chance to, have a, to be holding. But for the longest time, we didn't have that access. For a long, long time, we had all, our ancestors had all sorts of beliefs. Had all sorts of gods and all sorts of traditions and all sorts of mythologies. So the apostles knew, Paul himself knew. The task that was ahead of him. Because Peter, as you probably know, Peter was called to the Jewish people. But Paul, totally Jewish, he was called to the Gentiles. He was called to people like you and I. He was called to people who have no clue of who Yahweh was. Had no idea of who Jesus was. And so that's why you see the, the flavor, the drama, the heartache, everything that you read in Paul's uh, uh, epistles. That, that in itself, the calling of God on Paul's life to the, to the Gentiles in itself is a cross experience for Paul. And Because he now has to introduce to people a God and a nature, a love that these men and women have no clue, have no idea. He has now he has to spend time now. Uh, 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 teaching them to unlearn before they can learn. I don't know if you know what I mean. He has to spend time mm -hmm. with them, teaching them how to unlearn. They have to unlearn so many things before they can learn. 
Their cup is so full. Remember that idea? The cup is so full. Mm -hmm. So God wants to pour himself. Mm -hmm. But he can't pour himself because the cup is already uh -huh. so full. So, so Paul has to spend time uh -huh. telling them to throw away so understand that when us Gentiles come into contact with salvation, with, with Yahweh, with Jesus, it is our responsibility to bring all the traditions of our fathers and our mothers and bring them before the Lord. It is our responsibility to bring our mindset, our habits that we learn from our fathers to the Lord. Because we cannot retain our own man. Paul, Paul talks about the new man, the new old man. We cannot live in our own ways anymore. We, we cannot bring our old traditions and bring them to the church. One of the destructive things that has happened in the church of, of Malaysia is that so many of us Gentiles bring the traditions of our fathers and our mothers to the church. But the ways of men are not the ways of God. The ways of men will be one sheep can be absent, it's okay. One sheep can go astray. But God's way is not even one sheep. I, I, I'm raised under my father. And you can ask my wife that ever since we've gotten married, that I spent a good deal of time even reflecting on whether or not certain things that I see in my father are actually of the Lord. He's a servant of the Lord. He's anointed. He's gifted. But he's also still human. And he is the first generation Christian. I'm second generation. So then there are habits, there are mentalities, there are mindsets, there are ways that he learned from his father. And, and my grandfather was not a Christian. In fact, my grandfather was actually an orphan. And so was my grandmother, his mother. In fact, two of his, two of his parents were orphans. So, the Lord is so patient, the Lord is so gracious. That my privilege is to have to be raised under Him. And let righteousness continue His work in all of us. So I'm saying what I'm telling you is that even I even we are not spared. Even we are not spared from having to reflect, having to bring things before the Lord. Lord, is this of you? Certain natures, certain natures, certain characteristics that it's just, it's not God pleasing. There's no wholeness in there. It's incomplete. It's is partial. And the Lord will not have that. The Lord will not have one sheep go astray. The Lord wants to make sure that everything in our lives is as neat and tidy as He wants it to be. Beholding. So men, you have a big task ahead of you. Pursue Him. Seek him. Alright, and with that we go to John 15. I, I, don't, know, I don't have much time. So, yes. so in John 15, uh, starting from verse 11. I don't think this is John. 
Okay, I think maybe you just go ahead and read it on your own. But I'll read it from 7 to 11. So I'll, I'll begin reading it, but you go ahead and read it on your own for the sake of time. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be made full. So it says in Romans 14, 17, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. For the kingdom of God... But righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So we just read in John 15. In verse 11 specifically. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you. And that your joy may be made full. My word tonight to you for, for myself will be to be holden. Abide in him and continue in his word. Walk in the way of his word. Because that is the, the greatest challenge. It's very easy to give God the instant verbal response. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. When, when, when we're in an atmosphere that is so uplifting, when we're with people who are like-minded, people who uh, we're with that is in one heart, one mind, one spirit, but we will be thrown into situations where it's not like this. We will be found in moral dilemmas and, 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 and decisions that where we don't have a brother and sister next to us. We don't have brothers and sisters beside us praying for us. But yet the word and requirement is still the same. Abide and continue in my word. Abide in my love. And really the abiding, the beholding, it's the hardest thing to do. It's the hardest. When you finish church on a Sunday, your struggle don't begin on a Sunday. Your, your struggle begins on a, on a Monday. And then a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Your struggle is in your workplace. Your struggle is in your kitchen. Your struggles are in your living room. I, I'm very, I'm, I want you to know I'm not simply saying living room and kitchens for fun. Or even in your car. I'm not simply saying these things just for fun. Because if you think of it, uh -huh. It's in our kitchens, in our living room, in our cars, in our bedrooms, where we are truly ourselves. And that's the person God is after. When we come to church, we are our best selves. We are dressed nicely, our hairs are all done. We just took a shower, we just brushed our teeth, and we look all nice, and we're all prepared. We all know the schedule. Yeah. We know we come at 9 o'clock, 
Then the music will start playing. Then someone will start praying. And we join. And then the word comes. And then we say Amen. And we say Yes, Lord. Then we say goodbye. And we go back home. But then when we are in our homes, we're not prepared. Right? You don't wear the same clothes. You're more, you're more relaxed. You're more loose. You're not as focused. You're not as concentrated. Any of you go back home after any of you go back home after a long day's work and say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, any of you do that? <laughs> any of you go back home, open, put the keys to your door, open it. And then praise the Lord. And then you start speaking in tongues. Anyone? No, right? No. Yeah. And that is where God is after. That's what God is after. That's where God is looking. That's where God is testing us. That's where God is making sure whether or not is, is that what she gone astray? God is testing whether or not has that one sheep gone astray. So being our best selves in church is very, is remarkably easy. But where the Lord is after is, is us when we are at our most vulnerable. And that's where the abiding and the seeking and the beholding is required. That's where we're really tested. That's when when we say yes and amen, does it really is it really yes and amen? So, so it should be that when you say yes and amen here, when you go back home, the Lord reminds you, hey, you said yes and amen just now. Now that you're in your shorts. Now that you're in your car. Now that you're in your living room, your kitchen, are you saying yes to me? Are you really yes. amen? Uh -huh. That's where our struggle is. The greatest, the, the biggest fights that me and my wife have are all in the living room and in the kitchen and in the car. Church is where we have a truce. <laughs> Church is where we have a truce. <laughs> where we kind of like, okay, I, let's, let's do this before the Lord. Let's hope the Lord gives us a word today. Because there are things that we need to sort out between you and I. That's where it is. That's where the struggle is, the living room, the bedroom, the Let me be very honest here. Sometimes the things that we fight over are the most stupidest things. Have you ever gone into a fight before? With your husband and your wives. And the reason why you're so angry it's because it's like of all the things that you fought about it was the most unimaginable thing it can be the smallest the smallest of things you know how you cook the rice why you prepare the food why is this carpet not 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 vacuum properly. You know what I mean? Just a very quick and all those moments, those moments that, that make you get into fights all oh, very quick. You can be having a great day. And all it takes is for that one thing to be said and everything happens. You're laying on your couch. You're, you're just relaxing. <laughs> and then one person does something or says something. Just one thing. And then the whole atmosphere changes. 
I see a lot of ones. You know what I'm saying. Believe it or not. That is what God is after. Believe it or not, that's what God is looking at. Believe this or not, this is where our beholding and abiding has to take place. So there are some, sometimes she comes back home from work. She's a doctor. And I can be having a good day. Now she can say the same thing of me, alright? So this doesn't go one way. Where I can be having a bad day and she's having a good day. And so, if I lose my abiding, if I lose my focus, my beholding the Lord, I've just been distracted by many, many things. And then she comes home, you know, and she's not had a good day. But I'm having a good day. But then because of what the spirit and the attitude she brings into the home, it kills the mood. You know what I mean? It kills the day. So, do, so because I've not been beholding, I've not been abiding, I, I lose focus in the sight of the Lord. So instead of responding in joy and peace in the Holy Spirit, <laughs> I respond in anger and wrath <laughs> and war. Yeah. And then I'm convicted. And then I'm convicted. I feel convicted. So I shouldn't have responded that way. I should have been more gracious. But then sometimes there are certain things that are being brought up that are like, and they stretch. When you're in the heat of the moment, when the emotions are all high and inflated, you can't think straight. Sometimes it takes days. But at some point, there needs to be forgiveness and reconciliation. And in those moments, I always realize, God, I. I felt in my focus and my beholding of you. I felt in just abiding and continuing the work. That is the biggest challenge. And why do all these small little moments matter? Alright, this is this is and I'm closing with this word. I, I wanted to go further, but let me close with this. Why do all these small little moments matter? And it's a fair question. If you ask me right now, it's a very fair question, a very good question. I mean, is the Lord really that meticulous? And, and if he is, why? Because as you know, there will be very few moments in your life that will define you. There are very few moments in your life that will define you. You know, in a human being's life, there will only be a, a handful of very pivotal moments in your life. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like, you know, some of you will say, oh, you know, when I was six years old, this happened to me. And so that's why I think and I behave and I act Some of you, when you're 16, say, you know, when that thing happened between me and that person, that's what happened. Suddenly, I was, I was no longer the same when I was 16 years old. There's only a handful of these moments, very significant, very life-changing moments that will happen in your life. Yeah. Every human being has that. Everyone. From the right, most righteous to the most evil of people. There's always like that one point 
of their lives, or several few points of their life that determine their destiny, that determine their fate. Нэг юм уу эсвэл хэд хэдэн тэр мөч тэдний амьдралыг хувь заяг шийдсэн. Why do all those small little meticulous moments matter? Тэгвэл яагаад тэр олон жижиг мөчөд чухал юм бэ? Because it's in preparation for when those pivotal moments will happen in your life. Яагаад тэр тэр олон жижиг мөчөд нь өөрөө тэр бидний амьдралыг шийдвэрлэх мөчөдийг бэлтгэл олж байгаа. And if you have not been choosing God consistently тэр хэрэв та бүр тасралтгүй гээд бай болохыг сонгохгүй юм бол if you have not been abiding and beholding him consistently түүний дотор байгын одоо хоргодож түүний дотор суухгүй юм бол then when that one big pivotal crucial moment of your life comes таны амьдралын хамгийн чухал шийдвэрлэх тэр мөч ирэхэд That's going to determine whether or not you're going to serve God or you're going to serve the devil. Тэр мөччин таныг бурханд үйлчлэхгүй эсвэл бурханд үйлчлэхээс татгалзсан гэдэг чинь шийддэг. And who you serve is who you become. Та хин үйлчлэн түүшгээ болох болно. Who you serve is going to make you who you are. Таны таны үйлчлэж байгаа хин үйлчлэж байгаа чинь таныг тийм болгож бүтээх болно. You want to know how God's going to change your heart? You want to know how God's going to change your heart and give his nature to you? Зүрхийг яаж өөрчилж яаж өөр хүмүүс чанарыг өгөх вэ гэдэг та мэдчих юм. It's not instant. Тэр даруй биш. Is not. Do not wait. Do not wait for God to miraculously give you that moment. Тэр танд танд гайхамшигаараа өөр хүмүүс чанарыг өгнө гэж битгий хүлээ. He doesn't give you life. I like this statement from I think also Chambers. You will like this. He doesn't give you life. No. He doesn't give you overcoming life. He does not give you overcoming life. Тэр танд ялан дэлдэг амьдралыг өгөөгүй. He gives you life as you overcome. А харин тэр танд ялах амьдралыг өгсөн. So all of us are waiting for the special dust. The 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 special dust to come us. Гайхамшигтай эд шидэн одоо тоос энэ хүлээж. That can make us super human, super spiritual. Тэр тэрэн бидрийг супер өсөмслөг болгоо, супер хүн болгоо. Overnight. Нэг шүний дотор. It doesn't happen that way. Гэхдээ ингэж ажилтгүй маа. When Israel was delivered from Egypt, it didn't happen overnight. Израилчууд нэг шүний дотор Египтээс чөлөөлөгдөв. It was not one plague. It was not one plague. За нэг удаагийн тавлалтаар байгаа. It was several. Хит хит удаагийн. It was several. It was a whole long story. Маш уст түүх ярилцж байгаа. How many times did, did, did Pharaoh harden his heart? Тара хитэн удаа зүрхэ хат оруулсан гэсэн. He had his heart again and again and again and again. Дахин дахин тэр зүрхэ хат оруулж исэн. And you finally Israel was set free. Тэгээд эцэг эцэг Израиль. And even when they were set free, they weren't completely free. Тэгээд тэр чөлөөлөгдсөн мөртлөд бүрэн эрх чөлөөтэй болоод. Was Pharaoh had to change them. Pharaoh no change them. Pharaoh changed them. Pharaoh тэгэх хөөж авсан шүү дээ. А хаасан мөш. After God got after God got rid of Pharaoh, then they would have to wander the wilderness. For years. Тэгээд бохон фараоныг зайлсан ч гэсэн тэдгээр цүлт хэдэн олон жилийн турш тэгээд зовж ясна. So the story of God's work in your life doesn't happen overnight. Тэгэхээр таны амьдралын түүх ингээд нэг шөнийн дотор болохгүй. So some of us think that oh you know because that thing that bad thing happened that thing that thing happened you must understand all those pivotal moments of your life all right those very crucial moments. Mm-hmm. Тэгээ бид нар ярьдагтай за миний амьдралын тэр өдрөөс хойш тэр мөчөөс хойш гэж ярьдаг. Тэр бүх одоо шийдвэрлэх ач холбогдолтой мөчүүд чин. They are days, weeks, months, years in the making. Тэр мөчүүд чин олон өдр, олон сарууд, олон жилүүдээс бүрцсэн юм аа. Жилүүдийн үйл явцын үрд үе юм аа. And I'm speaking specifically about morality, the moral, the, mo- the morality of your life. Би онцгойлоо та нарын амьдралын ясвартгүй талаар ярина рэ. I mean for example even cancer cancer doesn't come overnight. Тэгээ хорт хавдар ч гэсэндэ нэг шүний дотор ирдэггүй. If you have a disease in your body it is not a case of like, oh it just happened all of a sudden. Тэгээ одоо би чи ямар нэгэн байдлаар өвчтсэн байгаа тэр гинт гараад ирсэн үү? That's the physical realm. The things don't happen when you develop a cough or flu or fever it's not overnight. There's always bacteria and it's growing and then you become Ханаад хүрлээ халуурлаа энэ чинь дандаа тодорхой процессын дараа үйл явцын дараа гарч ирж байгаа шинж тэмдгүүд багхгүй. So it's the same thing when we fail morally when when pastors and leaders when they give themselves to adultery or they or they steal and they lie with money Энэ яг ч яс суртгууны гажуудалтай ажилх пасторууд одоо захаар чи мөнгө төгрөг идэж чи залилж чи stop overnight. Нэг шөнийн дотор тийм болчихоо юм аа. It didn't happen out of the sudden. Yeah. 
Because on a day to day and a week to week, month to month, they're not be consistently beholding the law. They're not be consistently abiding in him. So why do those small moments in your life matter? Like I prayed in the beginning. He's preparing us. For when those moral pivotal uh, moments in your life happen. It's either going to make you or break you. I don't know if that's a <laughs> <laughs> And those moments don't give you an in-between, okay? I, that's another thing I want to clarify. I want to clarify. Mm-hmm. Those moments don't give you a middle path. Тэр мөчүүд бид нэрийг донд одоо нөгөө дундаж алтан дундчиг байх боломжгүй болох гэдэг. Middle paths are not significant. Тэр алтан дундчиг барай явж байгаа гэдэг чинь хамтлаа. No one remembers middle paths. Хич тийм дундаж амьдралыг сандгүй юм аа. When we recall the most important moments of our lives, they are not middle. Тэр бид нар одоо амьдралынхаа хамгийн чухал мөчүүдийг эргээд харах юм бол тийм either up or down. Саар л мөчүүд ерөөсөө биш байгаа. Нэг бол шууд бид нарыг дээшээ гаргасан, нэг бол шууд доош нь орсон. The either left or right. Нэг бол баруун тийшээ чиглүүлсэн, нэг бол зүүн тийшээ сонгох. The either good or bad. Нэг бол сайн болгосон, нэг бол муу болгосон. The either right or wrong. Нэг бол зүг байсан, нэг бол буруу байсан. In the Bible's case they either holy or they are profane. Библд дээр хэлсэн шиг нэг бол ариун, нэг бол бохор. And we can't escape them. I mean, we can run. But again, literally at some point in your life. Those pivotal that pivotal moment is going to meet you. He confronted Peter. Peter He denied Jesus thrice. He confronted Paul. Stephen was martyred right in front of him. Uh, the first recorded martyr in the Bible. The first recorded martyr of the Bible, of the church. The first martyr of the church. No, martyr. And the first person who died for the Lord. <laughs> Stephen is the first recorded martyr of the church. Stephen also was to me to so something in this And Paul was there. Paul was there. Paul was there. And the law had to confront him at some point. So it comes to all of us. The thing that makes us different from us and the rest of the world. Between Christians and non-Christians. Is that our choices? Our decisions. Our journey. Our destiny. Is towards the Lord. And don't you think that if we're going to, to, to take a divergent path, if we're going to take a different path. If the, if the whole world is going left. And the church, and the God takes the church right. Don't you think that church is going to look very different from the left? So I, let me kind of end by asking you this question. What of your current life what if your current life right now, mm-hmm. at this moment, at 8.17 on 20th September? What of your present life right now mm-hmm. looks different from the life that you had before you know who God was? Because the difference is very, very obvious. It shouldn't be an answer when you go like, hmm, let me think. I think, I, I think maybe... <laughs> no, that doesn't work that way. You should know. You must know. Yeah, I can tell you, the life that I lived before Christ, let me tell you. This is how my life was. 
This is where my life was heading. This is the person that I was. But when God came to my life, suddenly life was totally different. I no longer like the same things I liked before. I no longer hang around with the same friends I used to hang around with. My best friend was not my best friend anymore. So you're able, so this is the thing that I have to leave you with. Abide. Abide in him. And it's so hard, alright? I'm with you here. I, 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 what I'm saying is, I'm not excluded from what I'm talking about to you. That is my single greatest struggle. And, and I really have to say, like, thank the Lord he made it so simple. Thank the Lord he made it so simple. Even the most simplest thing is the hardest thing. So imagine if God had to give us step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. Even with one step, we are having such a struggle. Even with one step, we choose not to obey Him. So everything that Jesus says, if you realize, it's just one. Come all to me who you are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Pick up your cross and follow me. So they're all very simple commandments. They're not complex ideas. They're not, they're not like a puzzle for you to come figure out. There's a very simple command. And it's where our, our spiritual destiny is decided. Behold him. Abide in him. Continue in his word. In your bedrooms. In your living rooms. In your car. In your workplace. Men. Seek the Lord. You are the priest of your family. You are the priest, you are the head of the family. As Christ is the head of the church. Love your wife like how Christ loved the church. If you begin in your home, then perhaps the Lord can use you for him, himself. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the simplicity of your word. And your command. Now, Lord, we pray that we will obey you. And if we can obey you in silence, then God, we can, we can express the fruit of that life in praise and thanksgiving. Mm. But let it not be the other way around, where our obedience is loud, or, or the, the, look of, the look of obedience is loud, but there is in fact no obedience at all. But it means that our obedience is made in silence. Then let it be so. Because you're after our hearts. You're after the secret and hidden things of our lives. That no pastor, no leader can see. That neither our husbands and our wives can see. But God, you see that one sheep that's gone astray. You see that one behavior, that one attitude, that one mindset. 
You see that one thought, that one, that one wrong belief. And you want to address that. So God, in the days to come, perhaps even starting tonight, or maybe start to lean towards you. And in our hearts, say, Lord, yes, I want to obey you. Well, I don't know the cost and what's ahead of me. But God, you didn't, you didn't tell me to think about the cost. You called me to come to you. Teach us, O Lord. May we exercise even, Lord, to, push, to learn how to push away these thoughts. And to just focus on you. Because we believe that God, you are good. And if our obedience even costs others, then God, they are in your hands. But I must say yes to you. I must obey you. So thank you for your word. Bring these words to remembrance. Places that we would never imagine, we can never think of. Like our bedrooms, our cars, and our living rooms, and our workplaces. And in those moments, the Lord will cause us to say yes to you. You're good because you're preparing us for those pivotal moments in our lives. That will not only just determine my life, but the lives of the brothers and sisters around you. Because truly, O oh God, you wish to make us broken bread and poured out wine, just like you. So Lord, seal these words in our hearts. Let the remaining hours that we have with each other be blessed by you. And there will be an overwhelming sense of even your presence alone. And your word being spoken into our lives. And so much so that there will even be a revelation of Jesus. Only you can give yourself to us. Only you can reveal yourself to us. So we are dependent on you. We are not sure of anything. But we can rest assured in your word. We can trust in you. Because you are a good God. You are a God who loves. And we thank you, O oh Lord. We give you praise. And we pray all this in your son's name. Amen. 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 Do you guys want a break or do you want to come in? Yeah, no. It's only like half an hour left. Shall we continue or do we have. Yeah? Okay. Thank you for. <laughs> Of which I need to be spoken to through the alliance. <laughs> and uh, I know that the norms is that it is the father who speaks to the sons and the daughters. <laughs> and rightly so. And it is our responsibility and our privilege and honor of a, of a senior. But uh, in the family of the Lord, uh, the opposite can also happen. In fact, the opposite must happen. 
Amen. 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 And that they can be also an instrument or by which they will speak to us as fathers and mothers, as seniors and as elders. All right. And uh, because where did where does this come from? Because in the world it doesn't happen. You know, only the father speaks to the children. When children speak to their father, they get slapped. They get punished. And uh, you know, they get uh, they get all kinds of uh, of what uh, what is that? Uh, all kinds of negative responses. That's the ways of the world. But don't think that. Because it comes from him. Because it's in his nature. And the nature of God is the nature of a father. The nature of a son. The nature of the spirit. It's the triune God here. It doesn't the father speak to the son? But doesn't the son speak to the father? Doesn't the father glorify the son? But doesn't the son glorify the father? You got the point there? Eh? All right. So this is the language of uh, communion. It is uh, the the means of communion. And so, and I've been blessed. Just uh, I'm, I'm watching. I'm seeing. Uh, Eunice speaking in public like this for the first time. Oh, it scares us to death. <laughs> and uh, what a joy and a privilege she has been part of the family. I wish that uh, they, they could tell you, you know, the unedited, you know, sometimes we have editions, the unedited edition. Unedited. That means full edition, completely everything. Complete story. Uh -huh. The complete story. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. And, uh, because both your lives. Uh, both their lives shared a journey that has been remarkable. And like their story is the story of so many men and women. And uh, that's why the Levitical priesthood was designed by God only for a time being. Yeah. All right. It was never meant to be prolonged and to be endless. And uh, so as wonderful as it was for Israel to participate all of the external set up of uh, the priesthood. As extensive as God gave uh, the instruction concerning the raising of the tabernacle. As detail in every way concerning the sacrifice, concerning the priestly garment. But the Leviticus priesthood was never meant to be endless. 
It was only meant to be, as Eugene said, a preview. It was only meant to be a picture. It was only meant to be a representation of the rail. All right? Of the reality that was the time. And the reality of the tabernacle is Jesus. The reality of the priesthood is Jesus. So it was never meant to be kept as it is for all duration, for generations and after generations. It was never meant to. At some point, it's going to end. Because they were only a pointer, they were only a picture of the reality that were one day surpassed, overcoming. And we understand it today in the scripture. But as we speak now tonight, <coughs> this, this Jewish people, to this day, not only Jews in Jerusalem or in Israel, Jews in Argentina, Jews in, Jews in New York, New York, We have the privilege of visiting the Jews at the synagogues in New York. New York is New York is known as the Jerusalem of the West. Because just in New York, there's almost more than two million Jews living in New York. New York and right there in New York, and in different parts of the world, the, the tradition is still being kept. Of course, they don't have the tabernacle anymore. They don't have the actual priesthood anymore. But you're still keeping the traditions. You're still reading the laws. And through the years, you know, these traditions have kind of, uh, uh, what do you do, that they have add-ons. You know, and men and, and the Jewish people have add on to those to those commandments. Got the point there? Uh, that's why you notice that uh, uh, when the Jews uh, put uh, when the uh, when the Jews put on the uh, uh, what do you call that uh, their garments, they have got locks you know, at the end, all the tiny knots. Their shawls, I think we have them as Jewish So every little knot represents every commandment of God. And see how, how powerful it is to this day. So, so they kept the traditions of their fathers. But what happens? But they have missed the reality. That's why the shift and the change of the priesthood was so important to God. That's why the shift from the Aaronic to the Melchizedek priesthood. Was so vital. All right. 
and to a Jewish mind, it is impossible. What do you think that the Jews to this very day reject, reject Jesus as the high priest? Because the tradition says that the priest that or a priest or a man who is qualified to be a priest is a man who is on the tribe of Levi. They're from the lineage of the tribe of Levi. And for the last so many years, the 60, 70 high priests of Israel and all came from the tribe of Levi. And now God is going to shift the priesthood. And he's, and he's going to make Jesus the high priest. Jesus never made himself the high priest. It said in Hebrews chapter 5, Jesus never appointed himself as a priest. The Father appointed him. And the moment when the Father appointed him as high priest, the Jews were angry. That's why it says in John chapter 1, he came unto his own and his own received him not. Because how is it that you can be a priest? Or can you be a priest over us? A high priest over us? Or can you be that? You're not even from the tribe of Levi. You're from the tribe of Judah. You're from you're from the whole uh, the lineage of of of, of uh, uh, what is that uh, from Judah onwards and, and and all through you your tribe was never called a priest. But you see, they didn't follow what God was doing. He said, I'm changing the order of the priesthood. And I'm, and I'm going to change it from Aaron to Melchizedek. You see, sometimes how blind we are when we follow a tradition to the point that we have, we have, we're blinded. And for all the sanctuaries of the Jewish history, do you know how many of these high priests were all backslidden, or ungodly, or unrighteous? Can you imagine how blind they were? God only, God only chose one high priest, his name is Aaron. He personally chose Aaron. After that, all the other high priests was not chosen. It's all by it's always by family orders. You understand know what I'm saying? You know how many you know how many pastors sometimes you know they are called to the ministry. And then when they grow old, they make their sons pastor of the family. The pastor of the church, sorry. And the son had never been called. <laughs> but the son take over the church. <laughs> but he's not a pastor. He's never, he's, he's never been called. He's an engineer. But the father make him the pastor of the church. That's why soon the whole church starts to look like, you know, a machine. Because he's electrical engineer. <laughs> he starts to run the church like he runs you know, an electronic farm. God called the father. God didn't call the son. 
So the son inherited the ministry. Oh, sorry, inherited the church, inherited everything. And so ever since Aaron, the priesthood began to decline. Begin to move into corruption, into unrighteousness. Until the days of Samuel. And, she, and the scriptures say Eli and his two sons. It's obvious that Eli was not called of God. His two sons were even more so in call of God. <laughs> and is it interesting the Bible says, how, how many of you know, you know how Eli died? How did Eli die? Yeah, he fell. He broke his neck. But you know how he fell and broke his neck? Because he was sitting on a chair. Look at your Bible. There is no stool and no take no chairs in the tabernacle for priests to sit. You're not a man under standard bed with. God never constructed a chair in the tabernacle for the priest to sit down. I told you, you know how busy the life of a priest is? There's no chair. There's no stool. No picnic chair, the one we have. Are they tired? And the whole day is sacrificed and animals are the priest tired? Of course they are. But they understood that there is no provision for sitting. So don't ask me how they rested. Maybe, maybe priests and priests lead to one another. I don't know how they sit. You see how wonderful God is? There's, there's something about the whole priesthood ministry. Why? Because it's like what Eugene said in John 15, when you abide, abiding is 24 hours. Abiding is non-stop. You don't back up or back away from abiding. You don't abide some, uh, uh, sometime and then suddenly say, just hang on God, I think I'm a little busy, I want to abide from, uh, say, 6 to 9. Alright? Thank you Lord. But I want to abide. <laughs> and now we want. Can you imagine all those sacrifices keep coming to the tabernacle every day? I tell you, this, the constant sacrifice, the constant slaying of animals, you know how busy is it? And halfway through, Aaron blow the whistle. Few feet. You know the sign closed? Turn the other side. It's open and now it's closed. <laughs> then all the, all the children of Israel bring the animal. What happened? Lunch break. <laughs> you don't read that in the Bible. <laughs> So we all know the story of the whole priestly line of Aaron. And God has allowed it. It's to teach Israel that it was a priesthood that was passing. It was a priesthood that was to point to reality. Got the point now? So if you are, so if this priesthood is to point to the reality, then look out for the reality. Seek the reality. And finally the reality came. 
Jesus is that reality. Jesus Christ But what was problematic was Jesus didn't come through the common way that the Jewish people expected. Say that. Why is it that God always come in the way that you don't expect? Why? Yeah. It's so that to tell you is God. <laughs> it's to let you know is God. <laughs> Are you listening? Yes. Because he's God. <laughs> because if he is God, he chooses as he chooses. <laughs> He decides as he decides. Why is it that God so many times always walk in opposite of you? It's also to reveal, it's also to reveal in all of us the pride that is in our hearts. So the moment when the priesthood changed from Aaron to Melchizedek, the Jewish people were angry. And they were angry because they were pr- they were they were boastful. They were arrogant. Their hearts were in the wrong place. What is what is it that God chose the Melchizedek? And Melchizedek was a tremendous and wonderful example for the Jewish people. <laughs> tremendous and wonderful revelation that God gave to the Jewish people. And it has to be of all people it, that he has to meet the first seed of the nation of Israel, Abraham. Abraham is the father of the nation of Israel. And they're so proud about being children of Abraham. Didn't they learn what happened with Abraham? He met Melchizedek. <laughs> and then the scripture reveals clearly to the Jewish people who Melchizedek is. <laughs> He's like the Son of God. <laughs> He's the King of Salem. <laughs> king of Peace. He's the king of righteousness. No father, no mother. No beginning, no end. (laughs) Wow. And one more thing too. So what what happens when someone has got no father and no mother? That means he has a life that is not of this order. He has a life that is not of this order. So what kind of life is that? It's an indestructible life. It is an incorruptible life. Why did, listen, very important, why did God shift the the erotic priesthood into the Melchizedekian priesthood? It is to tell men and women all of these traditions that you have. And even though I have given you those commandments, I've given you those garments, I've given you those articles in the tabernacle, it cannot give life to you. It cannot communicate life to you. You, you have enslaved thousands and hundreds of thousands of goats and sheep and lambs. Did you have life? You have been walking into my holiest of all. 
You've been hearing my voice, God, I've been giving you my commandments. Have you ever lived? I'm giving you the garments that every time when you behold the garments of the priest, you know that this is sacred. Has it given life to you? You see, they didn't see this. And there's something in which we have to learn. You see how important it is for the church to understand that we have been brought into a priestly duty. Why is it that God has to keep the church of Jesus Christ in his priestly relationship with him? Because it's in the priestly relationship that the life of Jesus begins to flow through the church. That's why we cannot abide by our own strength. You just said when Eugene, when Eugene shared, what are the, what are, where are the places, where are the points and the places of which so many of us stop abiding and we get into all kinds of situations and problems. In the small things of our lives. Sometimes God has to tell you even the small things is God's way of telling you you cannot. You know, some of us, God is using small things to tell us we cannot. And when we fail to take notice, that we cannot, so that's why God had to use big things to shake you. So whether it's small things or big things, there's one lesson to learn. And God's lesson to all of us is, abiding is not by our strength or our power. Abiding is by the power of the indestructible life. That's why we're supposed to stay in our priestly function. And begin to draw from the indestructible life that God has put within us. Because that reality is going to keep us away from the bondages of just the upward. Now today, we don't have what the Jews had, all the outward sacrifice and garments and all of the, of, the, of, the, of the animals on the altars. We don't have that anymore today. But today in the church is being replaced by something else. Today is being replaced by all of the outward activities and the programs and the projects and the ministerial, you know, uh, 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 commitments and all the finances and all the running of the church affair. 
маш цаас одоо амтан ачирч өргөдөг тэр бүх тэг жайгуудын орнд юу орж ирсэн бэ гэхээр янз бүрийн христийн программууд христийн төстүүд христийн одоо юу вэ гэдэг нэгсэн шиг 7 жар ороо тэр бүхийг орж ирсэн. Today's being replaced by you know amplifiers and a mixer and guitar and drums of course you don't have others and drums and great you know uh, orchestras of 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 instruments I went to a church where there's barely 50 people. Barely 50. Small church. Like this here. In a smaller room. I was invited there to preach first time at that church. The moment I walked up there, uh, I saw a baby grand piano. You know, you know, baby grand, we call it grand piano. Grand piano, which is the grand piano. It's not those small little pianos that you have. You know, you know that you, 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 send, yeah, you, you send your daughters and your sons to go and learn and play piano. Not that kind of people, but grand. Baby grand. Baby grand piano. Yeah. And it costs 150,000. So anyway, when I came up to the church and I saw the baby grand, I said, my goodness, I said, wow. The church, the church is barely 50 people and there's a baby grand. Anyway, I preach. And, uh, you know, someone, and no one was playing the baby grand. And I like piano. I was wondering who's going to go up there and play. Later I found out, he said, by faith we buy and trust God will send the, the player. And, and right after the service, so they took me out for lunch. <laughs> they started to come and, and shake hands with me. Then I found out that almost almost half the people in the church were actually, you know, hawkers. They sell food on the streets in Kuala Lumpur. And the, me the moment when I found out that they were just hawkers. You know, they were barely earning a living. Then I knew that this church is in trouble. There's nothing wrong with the baby bread. There's something very wrong with the people. You see, you see what I'm saying now? What's happening here? What's happening? You see, this is what happened. We miss reality. We miss reality. This, the little baby grin, is a picture of unreality. Nothing wrong with the baby grand. There's nothing wrong with this guitar. Microphones. Nothing wrong with the Sunday school. All the programs. All the activities. You miss the reality. You got the point there? We miss the reality. And that is the tragedy and the history of Israel. And, and that's why Paul says that all of that's all that will, all that has happened in, in, uh, in the Old Testament. All of this, all that have happened to the children of Israel has happened so that it can be an example for all of us. Because 
And there's so many of us don't even know sometimes that we can be given just to the performance, just to the external, to the point that we don't even know we've missed the reality. So we can actually do all the physical. And I missed the reality. Do you know why he changed the priesthood? Do you know why God has prepared the priesthood from the Aaronic to the Melchizedek? Because it's to reveal to us this is who we are, what sin have done to us. That the power of sin can be so can be so deceitful. That's why one of the things when Karl Marx wrote communism. You know Karl Marx? Right. The entire for the last 100 years, the entire world that has, that has the communism that has spread through the world came from this man. He said, man has to be controlled. Because man is a religious animal. Man is a religious being. He said, he has to be controlled. That's so why one of the first things that communists took over nations of the world, the first thing they do is to wipe out religion. I suppose you all know what, what has happened, even in your own nation. This is coming from Karl Marx. Karl Marx has in But this this is something prophetical in which God foresaw what will happen to our human to our human hearts. He was anticipating the bondage of what sin would do to us. And how we are given to so much of the external. We're trapped in our external. And this is exactly the same error that the modern church has got itself in as Israel of old. Do you see now why the Jesus abides as a priest forever? What, what, a, what a comfort for all of us here today. Because, because if he abides as a priest forever, how many of you know that we stand a chance to stay in our priestly relationship with him forever? Because that's the guarantee of the continuation of the indestructible life in us. And that indestructible life is what keeps us in the reality. With or without the guitar, my worship is just as real from my heart to God. Yeah, these four wars are taken down and one day we lose our liberty and we can meet any place at any spot 
our fellowship is just as real. Тэм учраас би тэр зөвхөн энэ дөрөв ханын дотроос сүм байхгүй. Энэ дөрөв ханы ураад унсан ч би тэр хаач ирсэн бидний харилцаанууд үргэлж бодит байхгүй. Амин. Because it's life. Яг их амь гэдгийг өдөртөө тодорхой учраас. It's life. Амин. Why is it that God has to bring us into this priestly duty and our priestly function? Урхан бидрэг яа цаавал энэ тахилчийн албан дотор байлхыг хүсэх. It is life. Эсдэг байх гээд амий болно гэсэн. It is life. Амин. Асалтгүй тэр тахилч дотор уусаж байгаа амь байна. You know I used to have a, I used to say something like this. Би ингэж хэлэх яваад байгаа юм та. Ингэж хэлдэг. You can die at 40. That 40 years old you die. But you only buried when you were six, when you were seventy-six. Now let me say again. You can die at forty. And you are buried at seventy-six. Let me get it clear to you. At seventy-six years old, something happened. You walk across the road that was an accident, and you were killed. So, two, so you're killed. You're clinically, you know, declared dead. And so two days later, they bury you. They have a funeral for you. So someone said, "Oh, well, how old is he?" Oh, he's seventy-six. He died at seventy-six. No, he didn't die at seventy-six. Because if you know this man who is at seventy-six, he died at seventy-six. Actually, if you start to trace his life backward, he died when he was forty. When do we really die? We don't really die when we physically. Cease to live. We die when we have missed reality. We die when our lives are no longer living in reality anymore. That's why Jesus has to change. The priesthood. He has to come in the order of Melchizedek. Because it's in that priesthood that God can give us an indestructible life. Because his life is reality. You hear? You just heard in his story. He was raised. In a family, like any other normal family. Mother was a Christian. Mother did everything she can to give them, you know, the Bible, the knowledge, and they prayed for the children. Took the family to church. Took the kids to church. But the family remained broken for years. Here is a child that grew, this here is a child that grew up all through the years with Christian influence and Christian preachings and Christian prayers and Christian activity. But no one, no one, no one could tell her of the death that was living in her. And God began to work softly in His love for her. And of course, the great other story is God put the love for this young man for her. What am I saying here to you? You can be in settings like this. But lifeless. You can go to church and be lifeless. You can read this Bible and be lifeless. You can play the guitar and sing and be lifeless. You can sit in church for all the years and be lifeless. You're dead. You're dead. You're performing. You're running. You're doing. You're dead. 
We won't know this. We, we will know that we, we don't have reality. That's why it's so important for us to be a priest. Because it's the priesthood that keeps us in a place of life. Not in our life. But the indestructible life of Jesus. And it is, and, it is that, and it is that life that will keep us away from anything that will lead us to death. When is it that we keep doing something until there is no more life anymore? Some of us here, yeah, Eugene was talking, Eugene was using examples in marriage, in families, in children. Is there life in our marriage? You know how many men and women are married for the last 30, 40 years? They're not divorced. They're not divorced. They're not separated. They're dead. Marriage died a long time ago. Children then, your, 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 the children's relationship with you died a long time ago. Do you know it? Do you know it that there's no more life in the marriage? There's no more life in your relationship with the children. There's no more life in your communications. There's no more life in anything that you say to your children. You know how many times I've watched parents talking to children, you know, and you can see when I see those kids going away. At least when they're young, they get two, they use two fingers to do this. But when you grow older, when you grow older, you you you, you actually you can you can actually do this without the finger. You know that? When you're young, you do this. When you're older, you do this. What do you say? Yes, <laughs> ma'am. And then, you know, and the parents repeat. I say that. Uh, oh, uh, say again, what do you say? <laughs> oh, shut up. So that? They don't use finger anymore. Meaning, you don't mean anything to them. It's become lifeless. Your words are lifeless. Do we, do we see this today in our homes and our <laughs> Or it's because that we gauge our spiritual life just because, you know, at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning, for half an hour, our worship is so loud, our worship is so alive, our worship is so exciting. <laughs> Nothing wrong when worship is exciting or worship has music. Nothing wrong with that. You know, it's much better to chant or to sing by or to 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 go to choir and sing. I was in the church and the singing was so good. Yeah, I was in the church and the singing was so good. The musicians were so good. They sang and they sang and they sang. Do you know the, the worship leader didn't even open his eyes for more than 40 minutes? <laughs> yeah, I tell you, you know, some of us, we don't open our eyes. <laughs> I watched it for 40 minutes. He didn't open his eyes. <laughs> I looked at the guy and said, goodness gracious, I said, I was hoping he doesn't trip anywhere. <laughs> Just give him. <laughs> I remember when I took over the service, 
Because everything that they were singing to the word that God was about to give was completely in contradiction. And for 40 minutes I was standing there, I was in agony. I was completely deflated, I was like a bunch of tired. <laughs> and, and they were going on. So, I came on. This is what I said to the church. The pastor was there. I said, you folks have sung until you have sung yourself out of God. <laughs> you folks have sung and sung yourself right out of God's presence. <laughs> you know why that has happened? Because it's, we have no jealousy for reality. There is no jealousy. There is no deep, deep honor and respect for reality. With no knowledge of reality. We, 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 we don't even know anymore. We're given to the emotions. Like Israel, we're given over to the external performances. Do you know when God allowed the foreign nations to attack Israel? Scripture specifically said he allowed, he allowed the Babylonians to take all of the tabernacles and all of the vessels and take it all the way back to their land. He loved the Philistine. He, listen, he loved the Philistine to carry the Ark of the Covenant to their own temple and put it beside their own God. And then God was the one who gave and asked them to build all these articles, all these furniture. How can God who gives something can allow this to be wrecked and to be destroyed? Why does God allow that? Because we're played, listen, we're played with those things to the point with no more reality anymore. That's why the moment when we lose this reality, the very thing in which we think that we're actually doing it for God is on the path, listen, is on the path to destruction. Is on the path to decline. Is on the road to death. Be it our worship, be it even our preaching. I was talking to a pastor at the pastor's wife. The pastor cheated on her for four and a half years and had an affair. I set one of them down. The pastor will show you. I don't know the man. I don't know the wife. It's the first time I'm meeting them. I, I was contacted by another pastor and said, that you, can you please talk to this couple? And he's going through reconciliation and restorations and all of that. So in the course of my conversation, I, it must have just started in about 10-15 minutes. 
So I remember I reached out my hand. And I put a little bit of pressure on his hand. And I called out his name. I said, brother, you don't have to shake. You don't have to shake. Just look at him. It must be in less than 30 seconds. I don't know what I said. And he looked into my eyes. He said, I've not been reading this Bible for 25 years. It's been a pastor for 30 years. He said, I have not been reading this Bible for 30 years. The moment, the moment he said that the wife was about to scream, she, she wanted to get up on the chair. She was reacting. I appreciate that. Said, the reason why she was doing this is because she didn't know. She didn't know that the husband who was the pastor had not been reading the Bible for 25 years. And then I remember the tears. Then how? How about all the message? How about what you said? How? When you don't have reality, that's how you can do it. That's how, listen, that's how deceiving and deceitful and what will happen. See why he shifted the priesthood? It was in God's wisdom. By the change of the priesthood. By the whole ordination of the moving of the priesthood from Aaron to Melchizedek was the very mandate that God gave to Jews and the Gentiles of what will happen to our lives. It was God's index to measure our lives. And to reveal to us, to reveal to us what sin have done to us. That's why it's critical tonight for the church to return to priestly ministry. Without which, we won't know. We won't know when we have lost reality. We have lost life. We have lost his presence. And we have become no different than what the Jews were in days of old. Praise his name. Let's stand, shall we? Praise God. Father, um, would you come closest tonight? Thank you. Lord. Is <laughs> Our bit of here, any artists, get hand on hands on hard or that. Oh, you want a heart. Can't start chasing. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Бидэх <laughs> Та <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen.